hey, uh, the modern mystic from a year and a month ago, um, you were talking about, about free will uh, way back then. And, um, you know, you've been talking about stocks and oil and the, uh, the coming end of uh, the American dominance of the world's economy. Um, and that's, that's cool because someone needs to like be describing that for me because, um, economics was never really my, my thing. Like I, I took AP economics in high school and when I took the AP test, there were a couple essays and I didn't really try to answer the questions. I just wrote about, um, how our, our concept of, uh, money today completely misunderstands the nature of time <laughs> so I didn't pass and I never took economics in college and um, it's good to, to have someone else thinking about it for me um, because I wouldn't have anywhere uh, any idea where to start um, but anyways free will I know you don't you don't think we have it but you don't think we're determined either at least you don't want to say it and I think that's interesting because I just read this uh, study that was done recently by two uh, psychologists. Um, basically, they took two groups of people. Um, one group, well, well, they told them both they're going to take a math test, right? And for every answer they get right, they get a dollar. Um, and the catch, though, is you can actually cheat on this test because they tell you, oh, you know, the experimenter tells the subjects, oh, there's a, a computer glitch. So, uh, if you don't press the space bar a few seconds after the next problem shows up on the screen, uh, the answer will just appear. So, you know, to, to actually do it yourself, push the space bar real fast and go ahead and try to figure it out. Uh, honestly. <laughs> so, they, they primed one of the groups, though, and, and they didn't do anything to the other group. They just let them walk in naturally and take the test. Uh, and the prime for for the other group was um, they basically described a view of modern science which, which says that um, it is true factually that your mind is what your brain does and what your brain does factually scientifically is determined by uh, certain physical laws um, and thermodynamics and uh, when it really gets down to it, quantum statistical probability, which is still law-like, and they don't want to say anything more about that. Um, they didn't really go that into depth. They basically said you are determined um, by physical laws, so nothing you try to do, you, you, you can't be responsible for your behavior. Uh, your mind has no say, you have no conscience, it's all just determined physical law playing itself out. Um, they told that to one of the groups, and they then both groups went to go take this test. Um, and it turns out that the ones that were told they were determined were more likely to cheat than the ones who weren't to told anything. Um, so is it, Nick, you say they were determined because saying it makes people feel like, like what, like they're not responsible, right? And that would be a dangerous thing to tell them because it actually does seem to make them uh, care less about what they do. And somehow caring then must change what we do. So there must be something on the inside uh, that has a say about what goes on on the outside. There must be some degree to which the mind also controls its body and its world through its body. We can't just say that it's the reverse because then what are we even talking about? We can't just reduce everything to the motion of matter through space blindly without a purpose. Um, because that completely negates everything that is important about human life. Uh, it says it's not real. It's an illusion. It's a dream. It's a nice story. Uh, 
And what ends up happening, if that's what we think science is supposed to tell us, uh, is we, we become nihilist, because what is there to value if everything ultimately ends uh, in death, in nothing? So we can't say that. And if we can't say that, that, that we're determined, that everything is just particles, uh, insentient particles, then we have to admit that there's freedom. And we should be trying to figure out what it is, I think. That's, that's the next step. And, you know, you would think the most reductionistic scientist, or at least the most public figure who is a reductionistic scientist today, is Richard Dawkins. But even he says, you know, we have to rebel against our selfish genes. We have to tell physical law to go fuck itself and learn how to be humane. That's his position, but he doesn't talk about... I mean, he's an atheist, so he says that, I guess, the first step to being humane is to forget about religion. But what does he mean by that? Does he mean toss out uh, meaning as an intrinsic aspect of our existence and the cosmos as a whole's existence? Is that what he means by no more religion? I mean, because then, again, it all becomes meaningless. So if he wants to talk about how we have to rebel, we need to start becoming spiritual beings uh, not denying that such a thing could exist certainly denying that there is um, a man who lives in the sky that designed this whole universe I mean and this is basically what intelligent designers and creationists are saying so they're not they're not religious either they're secular Christians trying to prove their God based on rationality and God was <laughs> never meant to, to be rational because ratio, I mean, the word itself is duality. And God is not a duality. I mean, a concept God that is, you know, understood as completely separate and transcendental um, can certainly be a duality. But um, a real religion, religar, you know, etymologically, binds you together with what you have formerly been separate from non-duality in other words that's what God is and that is an experience uh, and that experience plays a role in, in, in what happens it values things, it has purposes and that is an intrinsic part of this universe we have to become that otherwise we stop caring we submit to our selfish genes which, by the way, transform as soon as we admit and assume this new spiritual role, they're no longer our selfish genes. They're, they're genes that have always been leading to this, to human beings realizing, oh, there is a reason that we are here for the first time in life's history, at least on this planet. So, um, what do you guys think of this, of this study? this experiment